you. Father God, we thank you this morning for the word of God. We thank you for your goodness, your kindness. You are altogether lovely, Father God. There's nobody like you. And we know, Father God, because you love us, you have made provisions for us through Christ. That, that we are not lacking for anything. That through, through Christ, Father God, all the promises of God are yes and amen. They're approved and completed in our lives. And so we thank you that as we continue to study on the authority of the believer, we pray, Father God, that the people of God will have a heart that is open and receptive to receive that which the Spirit of God is trying and seeking to give them. We pray, Father God, that even as the Word of God go forth, that it will not return void, but it will accomplish in the lives of the people of what you intended for it to do. We declare that our hearts are receptive to the Word, that will not simply be hearers, but we will be doers of the Word that we hear. Father God, we love you this morning. We thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we've been sharing with you, uh, this is part four, the authority of the believer. I don't think we finished up last week. And uh, we kind of left off, uh, and uh, I think it was uh, uh, first, first Peter, but I want to back up to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, chapter 5 again. And, and I just want to read through it, and we're going to talk about some things at the end of these verses. We're going to read verses 14 through 21. And again, I just want to end and talk about some things in, in these particular verses. And here's what he says in 2 Corinthians 5, 14. And we're reading this from the God's Word translation, so it would read a little different than yours. It says, clearly, Christ's love guides us. We are convinced of the fact that one man has died for all people. Therefore, all people have died. He died for all people so that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for the man who died and was brought back to life for them. So from now on, we don't think of anyone from a human point of view. If we did think of Christ from a human point of view, we don't anymore. Whoever is a believer in Christ is a new creation. The old way of living has disappeared, and a new way of living has come into existence. God has done all of this. He has restored our relationship with him through Christ, and has given us this ministry of restoring relationships. In other words, God was using Christ to restore his relationship with humanity. He didn't hold people's faults against them, and he has given us this message of restored relationship to tell others. Therefore, we are Christ's representatives, and through us, God is calling you. We beg you on behalf of Christ to become, re to become reunited with God. God had Christ, who was sinless, take our sin so that we might receive God's approval through him. You are ultimate. So, so, so ultimately, you have to understand, you are a representative, a representative of another world. That you are to represent Jesus Christ. Meaning you don't speak on your own accord. You don't act on your own accord. You act and, and think and, and talk on, according to what your king has said. Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. At least we say he's our Lord and our Savior. But I think we're very familiar with Savior in that we, he, he becomes our fire insurance. And thank God that Jesus is our fire insurance. We don't have to go to hell, not because, uh, not because of any bad thing we've done, but simply because we have placed our faith in Jesus Christ and Christ alone, that through Christ you and I are now received into the family of God because it is an acknowledgement on our end that we were sinners in need of a Savior, that there was nothing good that you and I could ever do to earn heaven. So if you're out there today, you're thinking, well, I'm just, I'm gonna, I, don't, I don't really believe in Jesus, but I'm a good person. In fact, I live better than some Christians I know. Well, you know what? That has nothing to do with you being saved. You are saved for one reason, because Jesus Christ is the one who gives you access to the Father. And it is an arrogant thing for someone to pay your debt, and then you say, well, I'm going to still pay my debt anyway. You can't pay your debt, praise God. Only Jesus could pay, it, pay your debt. See, your debt requires a, perf a perfect sacrifice. And, and, and the Bible said that the, the blood of bulls and goats did not satisfy. It just covered the sins of the people. But the blood of Jesus in its perfection didn't just cover your sins. The blood of Jesus completely removed and exonerated you from all your sins. From sins past, sins present, and even sins future. And people are afraid to tell that sometimes because they say, well, if you tell people that, they're going to go out and set up a storm. Not if you receive it in the love in which it was given. You, you don't have somebody do something good for you. So it's for instance, you had a, let's, say you had a, let's say you had a million dollar debt that you could not pay off. And someone came along and said, you know what, I want to pay your debt for you. Because you'll never be able to pay it because you're working at a lemonade stand. 
are you after that person pays your debt, would it be a reasonable thing to think that you would turn around and smack them and beat them up? Absolutely not. Why? Because you will probably be thankful. In fact, you'll be so thankful, you'll probably call up family members and close friends and say, hey, man, I tell you, I had this debt, man, but man, this guy came along or this woman came along and paid my debt off. I'm so thankful. You wouldn't think about, oh, let me abuse them. Let me beat them up. Let me go rob them. You wouldn't think that if you were truly appreciative of what that person has done. And it is true with Jesus. Because I am thankful for what he has done, I don't want to go out and abuse him. I don't want to mistreat him. Come on, amen. I want to do that which is pleasing in his sight. Because he's not just my Savior, but he's my Lord. And as my Lord, he has the right to tell me how to think. He has the right to tell me how to talk. And he has the right to tell me how to behave. And so him being Lord and his, the, 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 the love of Jesus, even though he is your Lord, he will not force his lordship on you. His lordship only works in our life when we submit ourselves to do what he says. But here's the good news about Jesus. Because he is love, whatever he tells you to do is ultimately for the benefit to bless your life. Not just this time in this life, but even in the life to come. Jesus isn't thinking about your life in terms of just in the here and now. He's thinking about your life from the standpoint of eternity. But we're so finite in our thinking, aren't we? We think if God's going to love me, he's got to do it all in this little short span of life. It's just a puff of smoke, people. There's not a whole lot you can get out of a puff of smoke. But you were created for eternity, even though right now you're living in time. All right, so let me go back to this. And again, we're talking about the authority of the believer. And here's the thing, here's what I want you to understand. That you cannot operate in your authority as a believer if you don't know who you are. If you don't know, you got to know who you are. And number two, you got to know the boundaries of your authority. Now think about that for a minute. You, 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 you got to know the boundaries of your authority and you got to know who you are. For instance, if a, person, if a person goes out and wants to pull somebody over, uh, guess what? If they haven't uh, uh, got any certificate that says they're a police officer, they don't have any legal right to pull anybody over. So they may have a passion, but passion is not enough. Amen? So that person could likely get themselves hurt because they're, they're trying to operate in an authority that they legally don't have. And when you are trying to operate in, a, in, a, in an authority that you legally don't have, the system that you say you're representing has no responsibility to back you up. If I go out here and pretend to be a police officer, the, 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 the police department does, is not going to back me up just because I want to pretend I'm a police officer because, you know, I want to be one. No, I've got, I've got to go through some, I've got to prove some things. I've got to receive some things that validates and says I am a police officer. Praise God. And so do you. If you're going to operate in the authority of God, you've got to know, listen, you've got to know the boundaries of your authority, and you've got to know who you are. It is who you are, listen, it is who you are that will define your purpose. Most people don't know who they are. So what do they do? They define themselves by their purpose. In other words, most people, even Christians, go after purpose. I, want my, I need my purpose. I need my, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? First of all, before you find your purpose, you better find out who you are. Amen. Because you might find yourself operating in a, in a position that you were not called to operate in. Mm -hmm. Come on, amen. And so you got to know who are, who, who are you. It, it, is the, it is the one question God answered for me when I got born again. I wrote a book some years ago called, Lord, I'm born again, now what? I wrote that book because nobody ever told me what happened to me when I got born again. And because I didn't understand who I was, I, was, I spent years operating in a way that I didn't really see the results in, 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 in my life that I wanted to see from the kingdom. But the reason why I wasn't seeing the results was because I was not operating in my right authority. I was doing something that I was not authorized by God to do. If, you, if you're authorized to be a teacher, but then you're going to be in a, try to be an evangelist, Guess what? Now, unless God has called you to both office, one of those are not going to work for you. Remember, I said this that 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 so, so when I um, when I got called into the, when I got called into the ministry, I spent three years preaching the word of God, and nobody ever got saved, and I was feeling really bad because I was hanging out with men 
ministers who were all evangelists. You know, evangelists walk into McDonald's, get everybody set. You know, and they talk about their jewel and their crown and, you know, how they say that's another person, another jewel, and they, they say somebody else. And I'm feeling bad because I'm thinking, man, I, I've been preaching three years. I, I, I'm, I'm not good at this guy. My jewel is all rusty and no, no jewels in it and just falling apart, man. And I remember I was in the backyard crying and, and saying, God, you know, I'm not good at this. I'm not good at this. Nobody's ever gotten saved. Now, mind you, I was feeling that way because I was comparing myself to, to the gift of an evangelist. And the reason why I was comparing myself to the gift of the evangelist is, is because I didn't know who I was in God. I didn't know what he had called me to do. I was just trying to preach. You know, I was preaching anywhere I could preach. But I, wasn't, I, was, I was like shotgun living, you know, just shooting all over the place. I wasn't rifle living like that with a scope, you know. I was just shooting up anywhere I go, boom, I'm going in. Open that door, boom, I'm going in. Going, come on, like, like Scarface, you know, out there. And he broke in, he was boom, boom, just shooting, shooting up everything. Just, you know, don't know what I'm hitting, but I'm shooting everything, doing a lot of damage, you know. But, but I'm missing everybody, but I'm shooting. And that's how a lot of people live. And that is a chaotic way of living. And you waste a lot of time and a lot of energy living like that. But the, but the snipers... They sit back within the room with their scope. They're looking for one shot. Now, I've wasted, using a shotgun, I've probably wasted all kinds of bullets. But one bullet is enough to get the job done. Mm -hmm. And he's not running here, there. All he has to do is be patient and wait for his opening and wait for his time. Sometimes, see, we don't, we don't want to be patient. We don't want to wait because this is, here's what we think. If I'm not busy doing something, then I'm not being productive. Tell a sniper that. He's not, well, I got to go to the grocery store. <laughs> you know, I, I go give me, give me a cup of coffee. No, not a sniper. A sniper will sit in a spot for three days if he need to. Mm -hmm. I, they, they got a movie called, I uh, can't remember the name of the movie, Enemy at the Gate. It's called, boy, good movie. It's about two snipers, and they're out there for days, and they're not moving because they know if one of them moves and gives away the position, the other one's going to take him out. Awesome movie about patience. <laughs> And the question was, who's going to lose patience first? It was, it's a good movie. It's called Enemy at the Gate. It's a good movie. I'm telling you, man, you've got to watch it. But, but I, I say that because we waste a lot of our lives doing stuff that God hasn't authorized us to do. And we, we spend a lot of time just wasted. And so, we, again, we're going to deal with this at the topic. I know I'm a, I'm a little off topic here, but, but, but I'm really not. But uh, that was just the groundwork for the, what I'm going to go into. So, so here's the thing. You are a representative of another world. Now the question is, what type of representative are you? Because if you don't know, you will be an ineffective representative for Jesus. Now, again, I said this earlier, and, and really this is what our ministry has been on, these three things, identification, location, and purpose. That's, that, that was the foundation of this ministry. And what I said, one thing this ministry will always do, it will answer those three questions. Who am I? Where am I? And what am I doing here? Because if you don't know what you do, see, if you, find your, you, if you say you find your purpose, Without knowing who you are, if you ever, if your purpose ever change, mm -hmm. you lose your sense of value because you define yourself by what you do. I don't define myself by what I do. I'm a pastor. That's what I do. But who am I? I'm a child of a king. And nothing changes that position ever. All right. and, and you have to know that because here's the thing. For years, I ministered. I was just a minister. I, tra I, just tra I was a teacher. I traveled around the different churches, jail ministry, nursing home, uh, uh, schools, or whatever I could get my foot in the door. I was preaching the word churches. I was just preaching all over the place. But when God called me to pastor, uh, and I had been doing jail ministry for about seven years, my, listen, my purpose changed. Now you want me to pastor. And he said, you got to let go of the jail ministry so you can focus on being a pastor. And that, and that was very uncomfortable because I was used to my old purpose. I was been to, so, so you don't ever define yourself by your purpose because it is subject to change. Like today, I'm a pastor. I'm not telling you I'm going to be a pastor for the rest of my life. I don't know. It could change tomorrow. God could call me to do something else. Mm -hmm. He could call me to hand it over to somebody else and go, go, to go start a school or something. Mm -hmm. so, so I don't define myself by, what I, by, by my purpose. I define myself by my identity, right. knowing who I am in Christ. That's why we're called Identify with Christ Church. Because if you don't know who you are, you'll never, you'll never walk in your authority. All right. So look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. And we read this last week, and I'm just going to kind of pick it up from here. It says, you have been born again, not from a seed that can be destroyed, which is fleshly, 
but through God's everlasting word that but through God's everlasting word that can't be destroyed, which is spiritual. So that that which is fleshly can be destroyed. So this flesh can be destroyed. But that which is spiritual, and you're born again of God's spirit, which now has life in it, that can never be destroyed. So, so how can the enemy really kill you? He can't. He can, he can help you transition to another level of life. But here's the thing. You can't even transition until God re is ready to call you unless you go do something stupid. Hmm. Like bungee jumping without a bungee jumping cord. Skydiving without a parachute. Come, you want to rush? You know, they have to rush, and they're going to rush and kill you. So we can do stupid things or, or, or irresponsible things that cause us to die prematurely. You know, overeating will cause, can cause you to die prematurely. Amen. Not taking care of ourselves can cause us to die prematurely. I'm preaching to me. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. I'm talking about myself. Amen. But all these things can cause you to die prematurely. That's not on God. That's on you. But you better know, you better know who you are because who you are will affect how you do everything. And, and who you are with this, and who you are in Christ will always bring you back to the surface. No matter what you lose, you'll always get it back because you know who you are. I've seen people lose their jobs and they went and killed themselves and lost their minds. Why? Because they, their identity was tied to their job. My identity is not tied to anything that I do. It's, 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 it's tied to who I am. And that is I'm a child of the king. And that's where your identity starts. And listen, that is not the beginning. What most people do when they get born again is they, they, they yeah, I got heaven and Jesus is Savior, but then they go back and identify with flesh. Don't they? They still go, now, I got to go to the black church. I got you know, people ask me why, why I went to Faith of the Victory. Uh, and, uh, and the Lord led me to Pastor Cowan, who is, people say, is a white guy. People ask me, people, literally, people who I thought were, who were tongue-talking, Bible-thumping believers. I thought they were fire from God. They were the people that asked me, well, couldn't you find a black pastor? Mm. That's fleshly. Because mm. then we just read in 2 Corinthians 5, 14, it says, we know look, for, mm. from now on, we don't think of anyone from a human point of view. That's right. But people still do. So even though they get, they, even though they get tongue talking and pew walking and, 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 and dancing down the aisles and rolling and stuff and, and, and shouting over the word, they still come mm. when they have that type of mentality. Because we, the Bible said we don't know anybody from, from a point of view, from a, a human point of view. The Bible said we don't even know Jesus from a human point of view. Mm -hmm. So when people waste your time trying to tell you that Jesus didn't have blue eyes, blonde hair, I don't care what he looked like. If God wanted us to know, he would have given us an image. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody sees Jesus in some way that, that, that makes them feel like they're a part of him. Mm -hmm. You go to China, they paint, they paint Jesus with slanted eyes. Mm -hmm. People be offended by that. Hey, he ain't got no slanted eyes. Well, Jesus probably didn't have blue eyes, blonde hair either. But, you know, hey, whatever. You know, God forbid he was an actual Jew. <laughs> you know I mean? Most Jews look like some form of Jews, but they come in all shades too, just like black folk come in all kinds of shades. You know, you see my brothers and sisters, we like a, we like a color chart. I got dark, dark brothers, and I got light, light sisters mm -hmm. and brothers. We're a color chart. I'm right in the middle of everybody. So, you, so you, that's, all that's from a human point of view. Mm -hmm. And Jesus never viewed people from a human point of view. All right, so, so, so he said, you were, now, uh, 1 Peter 1, 23 says, you have been born again, you have been born again, which means if you were born again, that means you were born into a, a, a new culture. Because every child, is, when it's born, is born into somebody's culture, usually the, the culture of his parents, right? So if you were from, uh, let's say you were from uh, Mexico, and you had a child, you're going to probably help that child identify with being a Mexican, because that's where you're from. If you born, and you're like from Africa, uh, you're going to always, even though they, they grew up in America, you're going to still teach them about their uh, African heritage. In other words, every child is born into the heritage or the culture of their parents. Mm -hmm. But we were born again. Amen. Come on, amen. amen. And if we were born again and God is our dad, then what is his culture? Mm -hmm. Where does he reside? Where is he from? Because that's who I now am because I was born again or what? His incorruptible seed. Amen. Am I making sense? Amen. Now, the reason why I'm sharing this and going really slow with this is because all this is the foundation of your life. If you start mixing other things with, at the, if you start mixing things in the foundation of your belief where Christ is concerned, it will warp you as you continue to grow in God. You know, a little leaven, leaven the whole lump, 
you, you start interjecting little things that don't line up with Jesus, and, and it just comes back from your fleshly culture, it will start warping how you see God. And it will warp how you interact with him. So, so here, listen to this. Secondly, we, we, we must know and clearly understand the parameters of our authority. All right? So your, your authority is tied to, your, your, your authority as a believer is tied to who you are in Christ. Not what you do. Not your position. You've you got to remember that. It, it's not tied to that. It's tied to who you are in Christ. All right? Now, he said, so we must know and clearly understand the parameters of that authority as well. If you don't know the parameters of your authority, you'll try to operate in somebody else's authority and then find out why you're not, and you'll wonder why you're not affected. Mm -hmm. See, you don't want to be a great copy of, of anybody. Say that. Amen. I mean, I've seen some great copy, copies of people. I mean, they preach like people, they, they act like they talk like them. And uh, I've gone to places where all the ministers, uh, they preach the same exact way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The same exact message, the same exact culture, the same exact belief. Not that having the same belief is wrong, but when the, when the belief is based on just cultural things that are not based on the Word of God, those are not healthy because you're going to spread those on to other people. All right? And, uh, but I've seen that. And, and the one thing I, one thing I over the years I, I've kind of come to the place is I, is that I don't want to be a great copy of anybody except Jesus, mm -hmm. and I want to be the original person He created me to be. And I tell people I don't appeal to everybody. Some people say I'm too humorous. Some people say you know I'm too funny. Some people say uh, you know I, I I don't roll my words the way they. You know, just, uh, people have all kinds of perspectives and ideas that they want. And that's, that, you know, I don't have a problem with that because, you know, God will lead you to where you need to be. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a problem with that. You know, we all have preferences. Remember this. Don't confuse your fleshly preferences and make them your identity. All, right. all of us have preference because of where we were raised. Like, 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 like if you're from Mexico, there are certain colors they like stuff real bright, you know, and they, they like bright stuff. I'm not a bright dude. I'm, I, you know, I want some pastels. I mean, just everybody's different. And that's fine because it's based on where they were raised. So you have preference. All of us have preference. You have the freedom to like what you like. But whenever your preferences come in contradiction to the will of God, then you got to choose which one you're going to follow. Mm -hmm. Your preference or the truth. That's right. Amen. Like, you know, I mean, it, it, it's, just like, it's like dating. You know, if you, if, if you, if you, might, you might prefer, you know, you might prefer sisters because you like their hips. I mean, you just have preference. Mm -hmm. everybody, everybody has preference. You know, women might like dark-skinned guys. I mean, you know, it, everybody got preference. Some like light-skinned guys because they say they make cute babies. You know, everybody got preference. Got it? But, but don't let that override the will of God. Mm -hmm. don't, don't set parameters on your life based on cultural things. That come from the flesh, because that's going to affect your authority. Because see, see, I've, I've, I've heard Christians say this. Christians, especially black Christians, I've say, had them say this to me. You know what? Well, you know you're a black man. You know they they ain't gonna be for you. You know if you black, they ain't gonna. Do, I said, hold up, that that goes against the truth. Mm -hmm. If God be for me, that's mm -hmm. right. who can be against me? Mm -hmm. Come on, amen. amen. The Bible says He'll give me favor even with my enemies. And I said the Duke can hate me and still write me a million dollar check. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because he he. Because they belong to him. So, so, so see, do you see what happened? They let that cultural thing, that out of the flesh, uh, put parameters that God never put. Thus, now their authority is affected because now they're speaking out of their, their fleshly culture rather than their identity. Mm -hmm. Your identity is spiritual. Your, your, your flesh is just dealing with cultural things that you may have been familiar with. That's why you, you're to never give voice to your flesh. Not his feelings, not his thoughts, not his actions. You never give it voice. Because the minute you give your, your flesh a voice, it will start dictating what you do. If the flesh dictates what you're going to do, then you'll never operate by the authority of God because the authority of God is spiritual. So in order for me to operate in the authority of God, I have to go spiritual. And what I mean by spiritual, I'm not talking about the smoke, smoke blowing and, you know, and you know, all that stuff. I'm talking, I'm talking about obedience. You want to walk in the authority of God, then walk in obedience to God. Here's what the Lord told me a long time ago. He said that, that if you want the full benefits of the kingdom, you must fully identify with the kingdom. Mm -hmm. You can't be partial American and partially something else and then want, and want full benefits from both. No, you're going to get partial from both. 
But if you want the full benefits of God, you got to fully identify, identify with him. you got to be committed. Now, this, I'm, in, I'm in Christ. Doesn't matter what happened. Why, why do you think Jesus didn't care about what was happening in the world in the sense that, in the sense of circumstance and conditions? Because mm -hmm. he knew who he was. And he knew the purpose of God. He never let those things define his authority. You know, you know they, they tried to make him in, an enemy to Rome. Mm -hmm. They wanted him to speak against Rome. He wouldn't speak against Rome. Because he understood that there's no authority that, that is established except that which is established by God. All right. And God uses it all for a purpose. An intent to bring his word to pass. But see, if you're earthly minded, then you'll never see heaven's, heaven's plan. And you'll only live within the earth's parameters. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, know, you know your spirit really doesn't have parameters in terms of the power that it can exercise other than its obedience to God. Mm -hmm. But for what you can do, what does the word say? You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Yeah, but you know, see, see, that's racism. No, it, it, it may be in your world. But in my world, I have the favor of the king. All right. mm -hmm. In fact, not only do I have the favor of the king, I have the favor of the king of kings mm -hmm. and the Lord of lords, mm -hmm. ruler of all nations and kingdoms of the earth and all people, races and creed. I got his favor. So, so, what I gotta, so, so why, would I bring my, why would I bring myself to a lower level of expectation when I can look at life from heaven's perspective, it tells me I'm victorious in whatever comes against me. Mm -hmm. and, and see, if you know you're victorious in whatever comes against you, you can walk in love towards all people because what they do really, oh, they don't even matter. Say that. When God is for you. That's right. Who can be against you? How real is that to us? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. This is why we don't decree and declare certain things because we still live by this. We live by the limitations of the flesh. There is limitations in this flesh but not in your spirit mm -hmm. that is in obedience to God. Mm -hmm. That's your authority. Your authority is spiritual, not natural. So when people try to do natural things to get their authority, well, you know, they will have to keep natural connections and natural means to maintain it. And many times people have to stump on people to keep it. Mm -hmm. But when, you, when, when your authority comes from God, ain't nobody, can't nobody mess with that. They may try, but they're going to lose. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because what, what does the word, what does the truth say? No weapon formed against me will prosper. Mm -hmm. Every tongue that rises up against me, I'll prove to be in the wrong. Yeah, but you know, we live in different times. Mm -hmm. Same truth. Truth, truth. So listen, if it changes, it's not truth. Say that. And I would, listen, listen to me very carefully. Listen to me saying Truth is not a belief system. Mm -hmm. I want you to no, I mean, hear this. I want you to hear this real good. Truth is not a belief system. And you know why you know it's not a belief system? Because all of us, in our walk with God over the years, our belief has changed. Mm -hmm. Isn't that true? There are things I used to believe, I don't believe it no more because I got a revelation of the word. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you what truth is. Truth is not a belief system. Truth is a person. <laughs> and that person is Jesus Christ. This is why you need to spend time with Jesus. You need to spend time with the Spirit of God who's going to speak to you concerning the things that Jesus has said so that you don't live your life very, you know, toddling between opinions because one person said this word, another person says that. No, Jesus is the truth. This is why I always encourage my people uh, that, that God called me to lead to develop your relationship with Jesus. Talk to him. Just have a conversation with him. Lord, you know I am. And, you know, it's okay to say, Lord, I'm having a rough day today. Mm -hmm. but, but I know you're still good. It's okay to say I'm having a rough day, but you're still good. And I praise you anyhow, because I know you got me. Yeah. He got you when you don't feel like you got. <laughs> Come on, amen. 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 He got you. Mm -hmm. And because he got you, listen, you have authority to tread upon serpents. Mm -hmm. The Bible says you are seated in heavenly. You are seated. Now, now listen, he didn't say you standing in heavenly places. <laughs> he said you are seated in heavenly places. Listen. You are. Seated in heavenly places far above all principalities, powers, might, and dominion. Now, here's why the, the word seated is real key. The word seated is a position of rest. Meaning your authority is not something you got to work up. It's just been given to you. And now you can rest in the authority that is given to you so that you can walk above every principality, power, might, and dominion in the earth. Because mm -hmm. you see it on a, on a position 
of being over all of them. Yeah, but these circumstances, wait a minute, you know, you look at the circumstances from the flesh perspective. All right. You got to look at the circumstances from the seated position of authority position. I mean, think about it. When we look at the earth from this position, we see hills and valleys and up and up and down. Don't we see all that stuff and you're like, ooh, those are pretty mountains. Woo. But go look at that, go look at the, go look at the earth from space. It's like a, it's, it looks like a smooth little ball, round ball. <laughs> it's just about your position. So, so listen, so when you see the earth from, from space, it looks level, doesn't it? <laughs> and didn't we not we talked talked before that that he will cause us to walk on level ground? But your level ground is not, about, is not about walking in terms of how you see the world from the earth's perspective. It's about living life from heaven's perspective where everything just looks smooth. Mm -hmm. And you're walking on level ground because you're walking in his will and you're walking in his authority. Right. You've got to decrease some things. I, I, tell people, I tell believers all the time, you are the prophet of your own life. What are you saying? We, most times we just say what we feel. Mm -hmm. You are the prophet of your life. Why? Because God gave you power in your words. Amen. To say, to speak to circumstance. Now, if you're not saying nothing, well, you don't get nothing. I mean, think about it. If you're sitting at home, you're hungry, and your spouse is in the kitchen, you just you sitting there starving, and you like, and you thinking, boy, you know, I really want some food. Man, I really want some meat. You thinking this to yourself, but you never say nothing. And then when you sit there, and, and we got to call nine one one because you sitting there because you got malnutrition because you didn't get nothing to eat. You want to blame your spouse for not getting you some meat. But you never used your words. Mm -hmm. And isn't that what Christians do? We blame God, but we never said nothing. Mm -hmm. We never declare what the word says. We can declare. No, we, we, we say, well, we'll just wait and see how this is going to turn out. We'll wait and see. Then we get, if, it get, if it turns for the worse, then I guess we'll pray and ask God for help. Man, no, I declare this. I declare that I walk in divine health. It is my birthright. It belongs to me. I declare that I'm blessed and favored of the Lord. I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. You say, it don't, it don't always look that way. That, that's because you're looking at it from the, from the flesh and you're seeing peaks and valleys and mountains. I'm looking at it from heaven's perspective. And from heaven's perspective, my life is smooth. And you got to look at life like that. that that's your authority. A part of your authority is, is, the, is, is the capacity by the Spirit to see things listen, from heaven's perspective. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's part of your authority. The capacity to see life from heaven's perspective. Because once you see it from heaven's perspective, you understand this is, this is smooth going. See it from Christ's perspective too. He, okay, let me, let me give you another, another thought. He already won for you. Mm -hmm. You just need to walk in the victory that he purchased for you on the cross. Right. You say, well, how do I do that? Obey him. Mm -hmm. Just do what he tells you. You say, but it don't make no sense. And remember when the, the first miracle of Jesus before when he came out of the wilderness mm -hmm. was at the wedding feast. Because they ran out of wine. Mm -hmm. and, and his mom, uh, Jesus, uh, they out of wine. He said, well, what do I have got to do? With? That was not an insult. It was actually, you read it, it's not really, he was not talking down to his mom. Amen. You know, it's, it's just a cultural thing that we don't understand. Uh, but he wasn't talking down to his mom. And then what does she say to that, to the service? Whatever he tells you to do, mm -hmm. do it. Meaning, he was, the, he was the one responsible, apparently, because why would she tell the servants, if they were not her, the, her servants that were responsible, why would she speak to servants that's not hers? Mm -hmm. To tell them to do whatever her, her son tells them to do. Head of the household got a responsibility. <laughs> and what does he tell them to do? He tells them to do the ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Get those vases, fill them up with water. And I'm sure the servants are looking at you like, uh, he's trying to get us thrown in jail. He's trying to get us killed. But his mama said, do whatever he tells you to do. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus told them to do something that seemed to be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you as a pastor, do whatever he tells you to do. And whatever he tells you to do might seem stupid. It might seem radical. It may seem crazy. Don't worry about it. He's responsible because when you obey God, the authority that, that, that the authority of your obedience kicks in and God becomes responsible to do what, what you're asking him to do on the basis that you know what he said. Mm -hmm. 
Get some water, fill it up. Put it, fill it up with water. And then they easy to go serve it. Stupid. Because that's how we think about God. Huh? Mm -hmm. I, no, if it don't make sense to me, mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. I need you to explain to me, Jesus, how this goes. work. No, you don't. You need to trust me with all your heart and don't lean to your own understanding. And like his mom, like his mama said, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. Right. That's what you're listen, do you your authority lies in your capacity to do what he tells you to do. He is not authorized to do stuff that he ain't told you to do. I, I want I want to I want to be a rap star. Jesus tell you to do that, then you wonder why you fail. He didn't authorize you for that. Come on, amen. amen. People, but people do that. I'm going to go out here and, and claim this mansion and believe God for this mansion. Did, God, did Jesus tell you to do that? Because he might need you down in East Nashville because there are people he might want you to minister uh -huh. to. Amen. But you, we're so busy trying to escape. Let me get to a safe part. You know, look, look, we all want to be in a safe. In ourselves, we want to be safe, don't we? Mm -hmm. But here's the truth. The safest place you and I can be is in the will of God. Mm -hmm. And it is in his presence that you will find peace. Not in your place, but in his presence. Because mm -hmm. many people have moved out to Brentwood and they're still miserable. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, amen. Ain't going to fix you. No, it, it's in him... We live and move and have our being. Man, I have not gotten anywhere. <laughs> got two verses in. Well, I'm taking my time because we got time. We ain't, we ain't, we're not going nowhere. <laughs> we all locked in right now. Ain't going nowhere. Anyway. So listen, we must live within the parameters that Christ has established for us as his followers. And all of us got different parameters. Mm -hmm. Just like pastor, every pastor isn't called to pass a 5,000 people. You know, I, I told the Lord, if, I, if all I get is my 20, and I take care of my 20 for, for 20 years, as long as they're healthy in the Lord, I'm good with that. Come on, man. It is, it, look, he, he sets the parameters, not me. That's right. We want the ministry to grow. Well, okay, that's up to you. Mm -hmm. Go out and share the ministry with people. Mm -hmm. Go share the word of God. Share your password. If, if it's blessing you, share it. But if you're not sharing it, thank my fault. I'm not going to go ahead and run around trying to get people to come in. Come on. I'm going to pass to the people that walk through the door and teach them the word of God. Amen. Now this is, here's an example of, of parameters and authority. A lawyer in Tennessee uh, may not be authorized to operate in Georgia. So if he tries to go to Georgia and practice law without getting, without getting a license in Georgia, he can't say, well, I'm a, I'm a lawyer in Tennessee. <laughs> they don't care. Okay. You're not authorized in Georgia. So, so he, he, he's stepping outside his parameters. Mm -hmm. this, is what, listen, this is why you need to have a relationship with Jesus where he can speak to you. So that you'll understand your parameters. So you don't start wanting stuff because people convince you you're supposed to want it. You know, everybody, everybody don't want a mansion. Come on. And it's not a shameful thing that everybody don't want a mansion. Some, some people want a cabin with woods and, and trees and grass and flowers. You know, some people want that. They want a little bitty, a little bitty ranch style house, and they happy. They are content. You give them a mansion, and they'll be miserable because they look at all the responsibility. They don't want all that. They just want a little simple ranch. You look, just want what you want. That's right. Come on, come on. Just want what you want. I don't, you know, just because I want them, and you have the one. Some people like certain cars. I got a friend. They, I want. This, they like these cars. I, I'm good with my Subaru. <laughs> I'm a Subaru kind of dude. Oh man, yeah, I just like it. It's okay for me to like it. Mm -hmm. Why is it so wrong for me to like it? Because you don't like it. You see what I'm saying? We, 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 put the, we, we, try to, we try to put people within the parameters that are not the parameters for them. Because the Bible said it is God that works in, work in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. To will his desire, to do his ability. God gives you the desire and the ability. If I don't have the desire, I'm not trying to work up a desire that I don't have. Right. Just because somebody else thinks I should have the desire. I'm going to live within the parameters that I have for my life. And I find that when I live within the parameters of my life, I'm happy. Have you ever tried to live in someone else's parameters? Mm -hmm. Do it because they want you to do it? You, it makes you, look, even if you make more money, it makes you miserable. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's not what you want to do. I remember working downtown when I was younger, and I came across this, I was talking to this homeless guy, and we just started chit-chatting. 
And uh, he started telling me about his life. And, I, and I've shared it before, but he said that he, he, was a, he used to be a lawyer. And that being a lawyer was the family business. And that he said one day, he came, he, he, he went to his home with his wife and two kids. He said, I walked to the front door. He said, I looked at it. He said, I turned around and walked away. I never went back. Why? Why, why did he want? Because he was living in somebody else's dream. He was living in someone else's purpose. He wasn't living in his own. And he didn't feel like he had the freedom to say, I don't want to do this no more. So he just walked away from all. He's been homeless ever since. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I asked him, one of the things you've seen in your family? has been about seven, eight years. Wow. This is why you need to, this is why you need to find out what God called you to do. And be content with such things as you have. And mm -hmm. quit, and quit, quit letting everybody tell you what you should have. Dude, if you if you like if you like a, a modest home, then that's, enjoy your modest home. You won't have the pressures. You listen. You you always experience pressure when you live beyond the the, the boundaries that Jesus has established for you. Because once you step outside His boundaries, you now have to accomplish this thing in your own strength. Mm -hmm. Another story. Another story, true story. A young pastor um, got the key to the city. Had a booming ministry. Was, Blowing up off the chains. I mean, you know, thousands of people come to this church. They come out with one of them, what a preacher he was. And, you know, he, the mayor's uh, acknowledging him and all this stuff. And then a week later, this guy commits suicide. Mm -hmm. Because that's really not what he wanted to do. But people pushed him into it. And so you can build a ministry on charisma. Mm -hmm. But it may not be God. Because when what you build kills you, was that really God? I'm just saying, I'm, and I'm just saying, so, so don't live with other people's parameters. They'll make you miserable trying to live, impress other people. Amen? Mm -hmm. if, you don't like, if you don't like my house, you don't like the car I drive, you don't like the job I work, oh well. I'm happy with it. Some people, you know, there are people who like being, I know men who love being, love picking up trash. Mm -hmm. They do, they, they love it. They, 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 they love it. They love being outdoors, and they, just, they don't want to sit in an office. Come on. They love it. Smell like garbage going on, but they love it. And you know what? Whoever's married, if, if he marries a woman, the guy should be grateful for his smell when he walks in. <laughs> but see, that, that's when you enjoy life, when you're not trying to live in other people's parameters. You're living outside your authority. Again, we're talking about the believer's authority, and I'm telling you, a lot of this, you know, we, we, we're trying to rebuke dragons and, and mountains and, you know, and all kinds of stuff, but we can't even find the simple thing of just living life every day and enjoying what we have because we're so busy looking at our neighbor's fences and mm -hmm. over looking, looking at y'all, oh, like you, you don't want me cutting grass anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the truth. So why live in other people's parameters that Jesus, he gave us all different desires for different things so that we might maximize uh, our impact on people. It's never about you. It's always about people. Right. I mean, come on now. Jesus knew where the gold coin was in the fish's mouth when he needed to pay taxes. So that means he could have found all the, he could have found all the wealth mm. if it was about having stuff. And remember, the devil, when he came out, of the, when he was in the wilderness, Satan offered him the kingdoms of the world to rule. And he turned it down because he understood his position. Mm -hmm. For me to take the position to rule the world, I would have to give up my higher position with the Father, mm -hmm. which means I'm taking a pay cut <laughs> <laughs> to take that deal. And because we are seated in heavenly places above, far above all principality, powers, mights, and dominions, we never have to compromise because when we compromise and get something in the world, what we're doing is we're really taking a less a, a lesser position. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no, listen, there's, there's no positions in earth greater than the position, position you hold in God. Mm -hmm. Get president, CEO, you know, things. Because guess what? Hell's still hot. Mm -hmm. Really, it's still hot. So, so as a lawyer, so if you say you're a lawyer in Tennessee, you, you have to understand you don't, your, your authority does not operate in Georgia. So as a believer, you've got to find where your, your authority is, and only Jesus can tell you that. And if you listen to people, people will make you discontent by what you really enjoy. Mm -hmm. People make you, people, listen, people will make you quit a relationship. Because mm -hmm. well, if I was you, I wouldn't. 
But they ain't you. You better ask Jesus what you need to do. Look at, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And look at verse, verse 17 through uh, 20. It says, if the whole body were an eye, how could it hear? Imagine, every, imagine, it, listen, listen, imagine if everybody, imagine if everybody got everything they want in the flesh. We would all look the same. Mm -hmm. We would all be buff. Mm -hmm. Amen. We'd all be super buff. We'd all have mansions upon mansions. We would, not, we would all have, you know, money out of the yin-yang. And we'd all be traveling the world, seeing the world. If people really got everything they wanted. People would give birth to their children, and they would automatically become, they would automatically come out of the womb, automatically become adults, knowing everything about life, and we'd be done with me. But if, if we all got what we wanted, God don't grow us like that. Amen. And see, listen, and why is this, why is this such an issue? If the whole body were not, how could it hear? Everybody want to be like somebody else. Mm -hmm. Most people, and yet here's it, there's somebody looking at you who wish they were you. Mm -hmm. And here you are wishing you were somebody else. What is that? That's flesh. That is the flesh dictating your life. That is the flesh telling you and controlling you. Mm. And God does not want that for his people. Here's what, here's what we aspire to. Or we should as believers. We should aspire to be exactly like Jesus mm. in the realm of the agape love of God. Mm. That's what we should aspire to. To just be enough to walk in the love of God. And I'm telling you, if you walk in the love of God, life is good. It really is. Life is real good when you walk in the love of God. You know why? Because folk don't affect you anymore. And whatever. You know, it's like whatever. I don't want to be your friend anymore. Whatever. Okay. I love you. I don't want you to go, but okay. But here's the thing. It never changed. Like when, people, when, when people leave the ministry, I've known people left ministries, man, and one young lady was telling me when she left the ministry, she was at the grocery store, and one of the old members saw her, man, and looked at her and rolled her eyes and walked away. Mm. Like, where's the love of God at? Mm. We stopped being family because we're not residing in the same building? See, that's not the love of God. Mm -mm. I tell people, when you leave here, when I see you, I'm going to love you, I'm going to hug you, I'm going to, I'm going to just, I want to know how you're doing, you know, and I want you blessed. Mm -hmm. I tell people you don't have to, you don't have to sneak out of here. If you, if you tell me you feel like it's time for you to leave, I say, man, well, let me bless you and send you out so that you can be a blessing to the next place you go. Right. I'm not a person to manipulate anybody to stay with me. Come on. You want to go? Jesus did, did Jesus manipulate anybody to stay with him? He, when, they, when he told them, "Let you eat of my flesh and drink, of, you know, eat of my flesh and drink of my blood," you have no part of me. The Bible said that the crowd heard, then they all left. And then Jesus turned to the disciples, "What y'all gonna do?" <laughs> he didn't chase nobody. And Peter was like, "Look, you got the words of life. We stand with you." Okay, that's good. But Jesus didn't chase people. Once they knew the way, he didn't chase them. Lost sheep, he chased, because lost sheep don't know the way. But sheep who, who knew the way and then leave it, he ain't coming after you. He, you, know, you know where I'm at. I love you, but you know where I'm at. I'm not chasing you because you already know the way. A amen. But let me say this in 1 Corinthians 12, 17. He said, if the whole body were an eye, how could it hear? If the whole body were an ear, how could it smell? So God put each and every part of the body together as he wanted it. He didn't make us all do the same thing. He didn't make us all to have the same thing because guess what? There are, there are people unsaved in every, listen, at every level of life. There are people who don't know Jesus. And God wants to position all of his people in places where they can reach people so that, listen, so that the kingdom of God can be maxim, maximized in terms of the people that are going to heaven. Mm -hmm. But if everybody living in Brentwood, who will minister to the people that's down in the hood? Come on. If everybody trying to escape and get their stuff. And again, if you live in Brentwood, it's okay. I'm not downplaying that. It's okay you live in Brentwood. But I'm saying is that don't, don't, don't let that be like, oh, I, I got to get to Brentwood. For what? If God isn't leading. If, all, if it's driven simply because you look at what other people have. Mm -hmm. 
and not what God wants you. Sometimes the, the best place to be in, is in those little communities where you can minister to neighbors and mm -hmm. people. You know, I love talking to my neighbors. Amen. I, do, I love showing them the love of God. When, when, when tornadoes come through, I love telling my neighbors, I'm praying for you. Mm -hmm. I'm praying for our community, man. You know, so don't be talk, don't call it to our neighborhood. I, I told my neighbor, I told my neighbor Nick, I said, don't call it to our neighborhood, Nick. I said, I don't call it to my neighborhood. I said, just know I'm over here praying and believing God that it will not touch our neighborhood and it will not touch our community in Jesus' name. He's like, okay. So, so, but what if I wasn't there to say that to him? You don't know what that little seed go do in that person's life. You know, amen. So, so, we, so God will put, God will place you where he want to place you. If he wants you to be a toad, then be a toad. If you just, I'm just a toenail, be the best pretty looking toenail you can be. Be an effective toenail, amen. Mm -hmm. Verse 18, let me read it again. He says, so God put each and every part of the body together as he wanted it. So quit, and then let me say this to, to other saints. Quit telling other saints where they should be. And, and where they should be on the base of where you think you are. Let people, leave people alone. Just love them. Just love people. Encourage them in the word of God. Encourage them to have a deeper relationship with Jesus. And while you're doing that, encourage yourself to have a deeper relationship with Jesus. So you don't condemn people because they're not, quote, on your level. Mm -hmm. Folks, let me, let me, every saying, listen to me. We are all on the same level in heaven. Because we are all seated in heavenly places. All right. But our authority do not operate the same way because we're not all put in the body for the same thing. Meaning my, my, my foot does not have the authority to operate like a hand. My hand does not have the authority to operate like an ear. It, it operates according as a hand. It picks stuff up. But what if my hands, I want to hear. I'm walking around like this. Nigga, what you doing? What you doing? I'm trying to hear. Well, I'm trying to do something with my hand that was not intended to do. Or what if my ears, I'm, you know, my ears say, I want to be eyes. I'm walking around like this. What you doing? I'm, I'm trying to see. No. God put you together the way he wanted you. How about you ask him how he wants you to be? Amen. And quit asking people. That's right. And quit letting jobs and positions and stuff define your value and your worth, man. Find your value in who Jesus says you are. The, the, I am valuable because the creator of the universe saw fit to send his son to die just for me. Come on. He called me a pearl of great price that he was willing to give up everything just Amen. to find Donald. Thank you. That's what makes me valuable. No job, no position, no money, or the lack thereof makes me anybody other than the fact that Jesus loves me. That's right. The Father sent his best for me. Look what he says in verse 19. He says, how could, it, how, could it be, how could it be a body if it only had one part? So how could we be the body of Christ if we all were the same? We're not all the same. Listen, you must learn. Listen, let, 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 hear me, saints. You must learn to celebrate the people who are different from you in the body of Christ. And what I mean by different is they just have a different way of doing things. Like some people go to church on Saturday. Hey, how about just go with them on Saturday? Just celebrate God with them. Lift up Jesus. You don't believe everything they believe. You don't believe everything you believe. <laughs> it's the truth. I mean, I look back on some of the stuff I believe. So I mean, I, I, and I just shake my, I, put, I hang my head in shame. Like, I can't believe I believe that. But, but what is our common ground? Mm -hmm. Our common ground is Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Spirit of God connects us all together. That's right. The head is what makes all of us function. Jesus is the head, and we are the body. And he saw fit to put us where he wanted to put us and, and to use us the way he wanted to use us. Just because, of, just because I'm not an eye doesn't mean I can't be an effective knee. Mm -mm. Right? Just be who you call to be. Right. Yeah. Look what he says. Look what he says here. He's in verse 20. So there are many parts, but one body. See, see you know, we a society, listen, society is broken up into the haves and the have-nots. Right? It, it, it is constantly being divided. We think the rich people got too much money, so we think the rich people should give away their money and give it to the poor people. And the poor people, you know, could, could get it, but they don't want to go out and work any harder for or re-educate themselves, or they don't want to do the hassle, so they want the rich people to give them stuff. And yeah, we all want to give the rich. Yeah, tax the rich more, tax them more. Yes, get their stuff, give it to us. We need it. See, all the world does is turn you against each other. Mm -hmm. 
in the body, listen, in the body, listen to me, listen to me, saints. In the body of Christ, we are all halves. And there are no knots. Why? Because we were, when we got born again, we were made joint heirs with Jesus. That word joint means equal. Okay, what does that mean? It means that whatever Jesus has, we have it too. What did Jesus have? Well, the word of God tells you, Jesus said, all that the Father has is mine. And he said that in his earthly ministry. He's showing you what you have through him right now. All that the, listen, all that the Father has is ours. Yeah, but I got some racket, I got this, I don't have this, and then like, I have nothing. I just wish God would have helped me. Somebody help me, because I don't have nothing. Somebody help me. Somebody please help me. 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 Given us all things that pertain to life. Come on, that's, that's the natural stuff. And godliness, that's spiritual. So everything we need naturally and spiritually, we already have it. Yeah, yeah but that is over. No, see, the problem, you don't want to learn how to get it. You don't want to learn how to access it, meaning you have a checking account with your name on it, but you don't want to go down to the bank and pick up, pick up one of those flyers that show you how to access your account. Now, I'm going to go bypass all that, and I'll get it my way. No, you ain't going to get it your way. So we, we are made joint heirs with Jesus, who, and Jesus himself said, all that the Father has is, is mine. Then, then, then we have to ask, the well, what does God own? The Bible says, the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. And all they, come on now, that's people, that dwell therein. So that means any person in the earth, God can use them to bless you. Because they belong to him. This is why I said, I want to see why people get upset over leaders. And because it's, the Bible says it is God who establishes leaders for his purpose. I'm not looking to the leaders of this world to do I'm looking at the one on the throne. But Jesus is using, the, I mean, the Lord is using, the, God is using these leaders to fulfill his word. And the ultimate plan of God is to get as many people saved as possible so we can go home as big believers. Because this is not all. We are in the world, but not of it. Amen. So, 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 and then God goes on to say, he says, the gold is mine, the silver is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills belong to me. You know what you need to be saying? Me too. But here's the thing. If you want it just so you might consume it upon your own lust, your own desire, he's not going to give it to you. Because he knows that if I gave you that stuff and your desires are wrong, it will destroy you and it will pull you away from me. Sometimes the best place you can be is a place of struggling because that's when you're closest to God. And if you don't grow beyond that, he'll keep you there. Because he knows if, if I give you, if, if you hit the lottery for $10 million, we will not see you anymore. You will be traveling the world uh, and we'll never see you at church again. Mm. Mm. And you will forget me because you will feel like you don't need me. Oh, mm. you, know, you, know the, you know the people I found who, who value what they have the most? And really, in, in, in terms of how to use it for the kingdom, are the people who had to believe God for it who had to obey God for it through years, decades, they had to believe God, trust God, obey God, give when God said give, and it didn't make no sense. Those people, they get it. They usually manage it really well because they've had years of experience of learning how to manage it before they ever got the wealth. Most folks want to bypass all of that. Bring me out, bring me out of the proverbial born-again wound and just give me everything right in my hands right now. No. Because you would ruin yourself. Mm. I love my son, but I am not giving him the keys to the car right now. Right. Okay, how much he may want to drive? He's not getting the keys right now. Why? He ain't passed no test. A -a -amen. Amen. Does it mean I don't want him to drive? No, I absolutely want him to drive. Because one day I want him to say, "Boy, take me down here. I want to drive. Take, take, son, take me, take me to, take me to uh, Burger King. Give me a burger. Mm -hmm. Ride me around. Take me to the park, son." I look forward to those days, but right now I can't give him the key because he has not been prepared to do that. And many of us want everything that's rightfully ours, but we're not prepared for it. Right. For instance, if I die right now, there is my son will get an inheritance, but he ain't going to be able to possess it until he gets older. Mm -hmm. Hopefully in that time he'll be more experienced at how to handle life so that if he, if he got all that money on the front end right now at 15, oh no, he'll be at the gaming center all day long. We'd never see him. He, his whole wall be game to game walling. 
So he has to grow up and learn how to manage the, 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 that at, at due season. Would it still be his? Absolutely. But he's going to be on the governors and tutors for a while until he knows how to manage it. Amen. God, same way. He don't give you everything right now because he it would ruin you. Just like you don't give your child. Any parent that gives their child everything right now ruins that child. And the child is very unthankful, unprudent, and they break everything. They, they don't care. They break it. Well, next, give me another toy. We had to take care of our stuff growing up. We had to, you know, if we broke it, well, dad, oh, well, you ain't getting another one. They'll play with it broke because you ain't getting another one. So we learned over the years to take care of our stuff. You know, as listen, I found my sock and rock and roll robot that I had when I was about like 10 or 11. And they still worked. You know why they still work? Because daddy taught me how to take care of the blessing. And I valued it and I appreciated it. Amen? So, so all of us in the body of Christ are called to do different things. We should learn how to support one another and not complain about somebody not having one. Well, y'all should, you should want a big house. You should want. And, you know, here's the truth. The older I get, the less yard I want. Come on. If I could, I, I, I would, if I could, I would build my house from, 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 from border to border on my property line just so I wouldn't have to cut no grass. Yeah. I'm serious. I don't like cutting grass. I only like being outside Saturday anymore. Now, as a kid, I love being outside. But as I've gotten older, I just, you know, I just, I just don't. Now, I'm not saying I would do that, but I'm saying I just, I just don't. I, I've changed over the years. Amen. So I don't have to have one of y'all because you want a yard. Amen. I don't have to want what you want. I just want what God put in my heart for. It. And we do change. You no, know, you do change for people. As people enter your life, you do change and make accommodations. I understand all that. But I'm saying for the moment, we, we have things we like and we don't like. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to be the like, I don't have to want a house like your house. I don't, want to, I don't have to want to drive what you drive just because you drive it. Because I don't, I, don't, I don't find my value in a car. And I don't find my value in a house. I find my value in who I am in him. Amen. Mm -hmm. So many people define themselves by their by their stuff and their what they drive, and people see their oh he's valuable because look what he drives, look what he lives. That don't make them valuable. They could be a heathen behind closed doors. <laughs> my, you know, my pastor Calvin taught me something and uh, about the Word of God. He said he said you know he said just because you preach a good word, and he said it can be a real good word and can bless the people. He said and, and miracles and, and signs and wonders follow. As you preach the word of God, he said it's great and all. He said, but just because he said just because God approves of His word, that doesn't necessarily mean He approves of the messenger. Mm -hmm. He just uses the messenger because that's who He has in front of the people right now. He always taught us that you know that that how we live is way more important than how well we preach. <laughs> Y'all thinking real good on that one? Mm -hmm. it, it, listen, no matter how. It, I don't care how well a person preached, if, if they don't live this every day, if they're not walking in the love of God. You know, that's what adds value to our life, is that we walk in love. Jesus, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples, mm -hmm. that you have love one for another. See, we should love each other, and listen, we should, we should support each other. Mm -hmm. and, and the Bible says the uncomely parts. So there are some uncomely, uncomely parts, or parts that aren't as beautiful as the ears and the eyes, you know, and the smile. You know, we call, I call my feet, you know, they're, they're very uncomely. But, but here's the thing. The Bible says you're to even give more attention to, the, to those things. Because they are, they appear to be uncomely, but they're necessary. Mm -hmm. Every part of the body is necessary. You know, so, you know, if, if, imagine if every, if every part of your body you complained about it. I just don't like my, I don't like my feet. What if you walk up that morning, your feet and just disappeared? I bet you miss those ugly things. Come on. What are you complain about your eyes? You know, my eyes, they sometimes look kind of cross-eyed. I don't really like my eyes. You walk up that morning, you have no eyes. Mm. I, bet you, I bet you miss those cross-eyed things. Yes, Come on, man. What if you say, I don't like my ears. They, they just seem a little big. I don't like my ears. You walk up that morning, you have no ears. I bet you miss them. Mm. In other words, the things that are uncomely about you, it's okay. Because they're still necessary for, your, for the whole. Amen. So, so if just as somebody say you got you, you you may not have the most the prettiest of smiles. Guess what? Thank God for that mouth because you get to eat, mm -hmm. regardless of what you think about. 
But if, if, if you're really concerned about the uncomely part, then why won't you, how, well, how about blessing the uncomely smile and, and getting it to the dentist mm -hmm. and help it out? You see what I'm saying? In other words, don't complain about it, support it. Help it be better. And in the body of Christ, we should be helping each other be better. Our greatest authority, y'all listen, is our obedience to the word of God. Our obedience, which is, which is driven by an agape love for God. Say, Lord, I'm going to do what you say because I love you. I love you. I love what you. I, I'm thankful for what you've done for me. And just you know, here's a, just leave people. Leave, leave people in the body alone who are just doing the best they can right now. Just leave them alone. Quit, quit complaining about. Quit criticizing everybody else's life. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's enough stuff in your life going on that you need to get fixed. Mm -hmm. Then worry about somebody else's life. Come on, man. Now, as a pastor. Here's the thing. As a pastor, I want your lives to be better. I, I'm always praying for you to be better. I'm always praying for, for but I'm not going to sit there and critique you and complain about your life. I tell people all the time, you know, if I go to your house and you got a, you got a liquor cabinet, I, you, it ain't going to bother me in the least. You got a liquor cabinet. Oh, you, ain't come, you ain't drunk. But isn't it amazing that we, have, we can have a refrigerator full of food and be obese and we celebrate that? Mm -hmm. But about causing gluttony mm -hmm. and it'll kill you. So we, we pick and choose the things we want to pick apart in other people. And I'm telling you, just listen to Jesus. He'll show you how to love people. He'll show you how to be compassionate to people. Everybody have areas that they're they working on. Amen. Am I preaching to anybody? Amen. We all got stuff we're trying to be better at and improve upon. But, but we keep loving each other and inspiring one another to be better in Christ. Amen. That's your greatest, that's our greatest authority. You know agreement in the body is, is the greatest authority we have? Because if one can chase off a thousand, two can chase off ten thousand. My God, if we could get the body of Christ to stop arguing about things that are not eternally, eternally relevant. Man, the, the power that we could produce. If we would stop complaining about the world and what's going, what, do something about it. Pray, believe God, find out, find out from Jesus what you're supposed to be doing. And stay in your lane, praise God. <laughs> Get out of people's lane, amen. Quit going to your neighbors and tell them how to keep his yard, but you got dirt in the backyard. Come on. Take care of your stuff and love people and be cordial with one another. I'm talking about believers now. Amen. Be cordial with one another. Love each other. Support each other. Amen. Encourage one another. Amen. If you got a talent that somebody can use for the benefit of the kingdom of God and it can help that ministry be better, then use your gift. To support one another. Not talking about, you know, they ain't paying enough. Jesus pays. That's right. And I'm not, and, and let me say this, I'm not saying the church won't everything for free. Because if, if, if you have an inheritance from God, then God has enough to make you pay people right. Mm -hmm. And I do believe we need to pay people right. I never argue with people about paying people. You know, trying to look for a deal. We, we, we own the world. We, we try to find deals all the time. To enable people. Come on, that's not, you're not operating no real authority. I always say, if you, can believe, if you can believe God for the deal, then why can't you use the same faith and believe God for the money to pay people right mm -hmm. so that they don't mind doing business with you as a church? Mm -hmm. Takes the same, same level of faith. Mm -hmm. yes. Just believe God for the, believe, for, just thank God for his favor. Favor sometimes comes when he gives you the money to pay for and pay people right. And so that favorite people will give you a deal out of their own heart and out of their own compassion. Mm -hmm. But but stop. stop. I'm, I'm just saying this to Christians. Stop beating each other up. Stop looking at each other and find out what's wrong. Let me find something wrong in your life. Don't worry, we, we won't have to look for. Because there's something wrong in all of our lives. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. nobody looks exactly like Jesus yet. But we are part of who he is. He is the head and we are the body. And we need to support each other and encourage each other mm -hmm. and love each other. And if we could do that, y'all, I'm too, wow. If we could do that, praise God, I'm saying life would be so much better oh, for the body of Christ. I'm not talking about for the world. The world's going to hell in the handbasket. But for the church, while we're in the world, we, we don't have to be of the world. We don't have to think like the world, and we don't have to talk like the world, and we don't have to behave like the world. Amen. Amen? And so, I, I, you know, again, I, didn't, I, I, got, I got about that much done. I didn't get far at all, because I really want to get it. But I just feel like God said, it's, it's put that in my heart today. You know, we need to love each other. Yes, we need to support each other. Quit complaining and griping and trying to find stuff wrong with people. Mm -hmm. 
Hey Amen. Get your face off other people's windows. <laughs> Come on, hey Amen. Get your, get your own windows and check your windows out. Praise God. What's going on in your own house? Why? Because God wants to bless you. Mm -hmm. You are not blessed to, be, to critique other people. Mm -hmm. You are blessed to, to bless other people. Mm -hmm. So be a blessing. And, the, and trust the Lord to minister to the people where they need ministry if they're not hearing you. Amen. I pray that bless you today. I do. I pray that word encourage you. I tell you, I want to challenge you a little bit today. That was a lot of challenging. Amen. But, but that's really the heart of God towards his people. He wants us to look like Jesus, and he wants us to, to love people and, and quit competing with one another, mm -hmm. but yet we, we are to support one another and not compete. If you live in a mansion, and I live in a ranch style, three-bedroom house, and you live in a mansion with 18 rooms, hey, God bless you, but you enjoy your mansion, and I'm going to enjoy my ranch house. Amen. Amen. And that's good enough for me. That's all I want. And so don't, don't compare the two. Don't think I'm less than because I don't have what you have. Mm -hmm. Because all of us are part of the same body. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. Well, let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, Lord, we thank you for your people. Lord, I just thank you for the authority to live obedient, Father God. The authority of God to live above this flesh whereby the flesh is not dictating and controlling our lives. And we're looking at things from heaven's perspective. Father God, we just want to say we love you today. We thank you. Yes. And we just, Father, give you the praise and glory. I pray for all those who listen that this word will stay with them, Father God. Not only will they stay with them, but they'll put it into practice and they'll carry it with them everywhere that they go. That we will be a body of believers that will love one another, pray for one another, encourage each other. And yes, at times there is places, places for correction. Uh, but Father God, we just thank you for just who you are and for allowing Jesus truly to be the Lord of our lives and to live that out every single day. So we praise you, Father, and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. And, uh, and I just want to yeah, I, I just want to also say to those who called in today, uh, thank you for calling in uh, through our conference line. I pray that that blesses you. Uh, again, that, that is always available to us through each service. And if you would, you know, take advantage of that and... Uh, just, just be here with us and receive the word of God. We want nothing more than for you to be the best that Jesus Christ has called you to be. That is our ultimate desire, mm -hmm. that you will walk out the plan and purpose for Christ in your life every single day. Just know we love you and we thank God for you. Amen.